Welcome to a new series on Spectre Console, the NuGet package for .NET that allows you to turn your C-sharp console apps into visually appealing, informative applications. In this series, we're going to learn about the various parts of Spectre Console in 10-minute chunks. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to ensure you're notified about upcoming releases. Each chunk will be a standalone feature, so you can also use the series as a reference guide later when you're building out your own console app. In the description of each video will be a link to download the source code for that particular lesson. Also, if you would like more resources for learning C Sharp, including a full free course, you can go to imtimcorey.com. Now, let's look at some of the things we'll be learning over the course of this series. And to do that, we're going to run the completed application. And we're going to talk basic markup, for example, coloration or bold or even blinking text. We'll get into styling, including italics and, and highlighting and more. Then we'll get into text prompts. For example, what's your age? Well, I don't want to give them my age when I hit, you know, uh, test. And I say, nope, that's invalid input. I didn't write that. That's Spectre Console doing it for me. Are you happy? Yes or no are the only options, but I have a default value of yes. So now I do that and it knows my answers. We're going to talk about item selection, where we can use the arrow keys to select one entry, and then it knows which one we selected. We can also talk about multi-select, where we say, hey, you know what? I want to select one from this list and all from that list, and then it knows which ones I selected. We're going to talk about tables and displaying tables with left aligned, center aligned, right aligned, padding, and all the rest. We're going to talk about panels, including styling inside those panels. We're going to talk about figlet text, which allows you to create this ASCII word art very easily from just text in your application. We're going to talk about displaying JSON data, which comes from an API like so. We're going to talk about statuses and spinners, where we can see that download progress as we go. We're going to see progress bars and how to utilize them in our applications. We're going to see live displays that can update a table in real time or update other data in real time as data gets loaded in. We're going to see emojis and how to use those in our applications. We're going to build our own custom spinner for our, whenever we have a loading scenario. And we're even going to format exceptions, including adding blink to it and shrinking down some of the extra data we just don't need to see. So we can see just the important information in our exceptions. There's a lot in this course we're going to cover. And at the end of it, if you say, hey, you know what, I'm missing something, you can even ask for more. And there may be more in this series. I hope you enjoy this series. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.